today. Look, what do you even want out of Intellivision in 2021? This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint. We'd like to wish you a happy Bidoof Day. Sorry, isn't it Canada Day? Sure, if you go by the actual calendar, but wouldn't it be more fun for once to celebrate a made-up holiday owned by a corporation? Uh, I mean, I'm more of a lapsed Pokemonic, though. Yeah? Yeah, but you know, I still make time to celebrate Ash Wednesday. After four long years, all of Breath of the Wild's secrets have finally been unlocked. The last of the game's impossible chests, i.e. treasure chests that are unable to be opened by mere smooth-brained mortals such as you and I, has finally been beaten, a mere few weeks after we reported on it, which means our coverage almost certainly contributed to this monumental event in gaming history. The chest itself will only spawn if you get within 60 meters of it, immediately begins to sink, and then despawns seven seconds later. The YouTuber who finally managed to open the chest by the name of Cleric did so by dropping below the map, intercepting the chest right as it spawned, and then deploying a perfectly timed and aimed array of bombs, arrows, and stasis powers to freeze the chest, push it towards them, snag it out of the air with Magnesis, and finally place it on a Cryonis platform. Their reward is my breathless coverage of their heroic deeds, and also a piece of amber, which I think we can all agree is at least equivalent. Smash Brothers gameplay of latest roster edition Kazuya Mishima was revealed this week, which was a surprise to me because I was pretty sure we'd seen it all back when Nintendo revealed the character during its E3 Direct and brought the whole show to a screeching halt while they laboriously showed us all the different punches and, get this, kicks he could do. How fucking fascinating that was. A Fido-type guy doing the Fido with his Fido bits? Color me moist. Still, every time a quote-unquote real fighting game character makes the jump to Smash Brothers, it must be a hell of a culture shock. I used to fight big muscly martial arts masters, but now I'm getting shocked by a yellow baby mouse eaten by a pink blob mocking me with my own haircut and shot in the face by a fox with a laser gun. What the hell happened? I want to get back to my normal life where I used to fight an ambulatory tree and a bipedal bear. Hey, who wants to see me transform into a literal devil? Publisher Perfect World has announced that Magic Legends is shutting down in October, which is both surprising and not surprising. It's surprising because the game was developed by Cryptic Studios, who know what they're doing. It was a Diablo-like action RPG set in the world of Magic the Gathering, and most notably, it hadn't been officially released. It was still in its open public beta. But then it's not surprising, because everything else Cryptic has made, City of Heroes, Champions Online, Star Trek Online, Neverwinter, are all MMOs, not action RPGs. And in fact, Magic Legends was originally announced as an MMO, meaning its shift to ARPG probably should have been the first sign. I got a chance to play it at PAX East 2020, the final PAX, and it seemed promising. I was honestly really looking forward to the game, even though it needed more time in the oven. But according to players from their closed alpha release, very little, if any, player feedback was incorporated into the game before the eventual public beta, which was complete with microtransactions. So we say the game was never actually released, but as James Stephanie Sterling has repeatedly argued, if your beta has a full suite of microtransactions, that's just release. To the publisher's credit, they are fully refunding all purchases, which I guess by that criteria means they're unreleasing the game. Oh, and 44 developers have been fired for doing exactly what their bosses told them to do, but the bosses are still employed because that's game development, baby! If playing Game Boy ROMs has you looking over your own shoulder for the authorities, a new option is available for you. The GB Operator by Epilogue lets you connect your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance cartridges to your computer to directly emulate them. At first glance, it's pretty easy to understand what this is. It's an emulation device, but it doesn't emulate the whole system, it just reads a cartridge. Since you need actual cartridges, it's 
not a retro console like the NES Classic. Since you need a computer to run the emulation software, it's not a hardware-based emulator like the Analog NT. It lets you download data from all sorts of carts, including the Game Boy Camera, so you can back up your save data from games with battery backup. But it also lets you upload data to flash carts, which they say is for homebrew, but a game is a game is a game, so I don't think there's anything stopping you from filling a flash cart with commercial ROMs. I rewrote this story about 10 times trying to figure out why I'm so drawn to this thing. They bill it as a cartridge slot for your computer. And man, when I was younger, that is all I wanted. Just a cool way to go to the store, buy or rent a game for a console I couldn't yet afford and just play it. I wouldn't have to have a ton of consoles spaghettied up to my TV and I could save the games on my computer and back them up to a floppy disk if I was worried I'd lose them. But now, I take one look at this and think, Arrgh me mateys, which is stupid. Epilogue's made a USB game card reader, but for Game Boy and GBA cartridges. And just because you can upload homebrew onto flash carts, the only thing I can see is how it'll be used to pirate games. Which is ridiculous, because if you think about it, no pirate is going to pay 50 bucks to buy a computer dongle when they're already downloading the ROMs for free. At most, I'd have to buy this and a GBA flash cart, and I'd only end up using it to get a few old classics running on my DS Lite, but since I found my copies of Metroid Fusion and Astro Boy Omega Factor last night, that's starting to feel largely irrelevant. So good luck with your rubber-bottomed dongle epilogue. Sometimes making hardware is just about making something neat, and this sure looks neat. We previously goofed a little bit on the Intellivision Amico and its nine-minute video that was apparently enough of an E3 presentation to qualify for an E3 award, which you'll recall was Most Anticipated Intellivision Game for Asteroids, a game that does not exist in this context. But new information has come out and the whole thing seems even sillier than before. Some viewers of the Intellivision E3 video noticed that some of the shots of families happily playing the Amico together were stock images with different gaming controllers replaced with Amico pads, which is kind of funny, but not necessarily a bad thing, as Intellivision president Tommy Tallarico said in a tweet, quote, that is exactly what stock photos are meant for and why they exist, and linking to the Wikipedia entry to define what a stock photo is, which is true. But also, it's not a great sign if you don't have prototypes with which to take your own photos. Anyway, the Amico news this week is that Ars Technica wrote up a big story on information from the console's publicly available developer portal. Again, a bunch of info was posted on a public website with no password. It's gone now, but the information is out there, much to the chagrin of, guess who, Tommy Tallarico, who said in another now-deleted tweet, quote, Ars Technica journalist, Tommy's sarcastic air quotes, not mine, Sam Mekovich, just illegally posted a bunch of confidential information on his ridiculous misinformed article. The private info said not for public and confidential all over it. Unfortunately, legal action will have to be taken. Tommy's been in video games for 30 years. He should know that writing not for public on something doesn't make it magically invisible. Anyway, among the confidential information was a comparison that suggested the Amico's system-on-chip processing unit is roughly comparable to a Snapdragon 617 from a ZTE ZMAX Pro Z981, a $100 smartphone that launched in 2016. The system is available for pre-order at $250, US dollars, or however many kroner that is. The dev portal also had a list of game design requirements for all Amico games, stuff like games must be rated everyone, or playable with very little instruction. And there were some other unusual notes, like, quote, ask yourself if Angry Birds would be a hit if it was called The Catapult Game, and, quote, humor entertains both males and females, so you can double your audience when you entertain both, which, while awkwardly worded, are just kind of good notes in general, not Amico specific. There was one point that said, for any game to be released on the Amico, it had to rate at least a 7 out of 10 on the Intellivision quality control scale, with no indication of what the heck that is. For his part, Tallarico has since apologized for putting ours and its journalist on blast and said the info isn't even true, but also hasn't specified what the correct information is. 
For one thing, I would like the record corrected that Angry Birds uses a slingshot, not a catapult. I will say I'm sorely tempted to get one of these to review it, but the last time I ordered a console online, Soldier Boy took my $150 and fucked off. Oh, I just got it. Your Soldier Game Boy? No, no, no. Bidoof Day. It's the beaver Pokemon. That's why they made it Bidoof Day on Canada Day. Well, maybe they just knew we weren't celebrating anything else today this year. Right, yeah, all our local Canada Day stuff is cancelled because Canadian society in general has realized we can't keep pretending we haven't been awful to the First Nations for basically the entire history of the country. But at least we've now got Beavermon? Coming up, if you liked Control, then psychokinetically hang on to your hats because Developer Remedy is working on new games, one of which will be multiplayer. After all, the only thing more fun than hurling a forklift at interdimensional horrors is two people hurling forklifts at each other. We previously goofed a little, a little bit, a little butt, a butt, but, 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 let's try that again. Hi, Beach. Hi. Shit. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. We were we were saying just before recording. Actually, Paul was comparing it to the the reporter in Ted Lasso for people who've seen it. But like the thing about the Intellivision Amico is like I don't think it's gonna do well, and I'm not gonna feel good about it. Yeah, right. Like that. The story I'm sure made it sound like I was like, haha, f you, Intellivision or whatever. Yeah. And, I mean, to be fair. He's not going to watch this, I hope. But uh, Tommy Tallarico has always struck me as just like kind of an odd guy, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, I, I don't think that console is going to do well. I and mean, I'm not going to gloat about it. But it's like, oof. The, the two biggest red flags for me were like where they intersect. The thing that makes it a red flag. So the, the, the flagpole and the flag itself yeah. was the flag that says that uh, every game has to be Intellivision exclusive. And yeah. that means that if it's a port, it has to have exclusive features in some way. But mm -hmm. that means that it's like they're looking for exclusives. And those same games must cost less than $10. Yeah. And I'm like, those two things together mean that if you want a spate of incredibly fun games that are going to drive people to adopt your console, you're going to have to sell a lot of consoles because game developers aren't going to sell a lot of games. They have to be balanced so that players of different skill levels can play together and have fun right they have to be easy to understand with minimal instruction mm -hmm. exclusive to the console in some way less than ten dollars can't be fully 3d and score a seven out of ten on whatever on this in mythical scale the internal scale yeah no one's gonna want to make games for that dude no like what it's, a what a woof because yeah if if i was like i would if i'm like oh i could put this game that i've made i could put towerfall on this new ouya yeah, I could so I could certainly do that, but I don't want to put it just on this new console. Be, you know, I could see maybe doing like what Maddie did, where Towerfall went onto the Ouya as an exclusive, and then it's like, great, my contract's up. Now it's time to release it everywhere else and actually make my money back. Yeah, I could see that being the case, but unless Intellivision is ponying up like a lot of money up front for people to make the games for them. I don't think there's going to be much of a rush for people to do that. And it's weird because the play date is a thing. And that has a bunch of games that are definitely exclusive to the play, play date, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a completely different feel for the market that, yeah. that they're looking at. You know, yeah. like families aren't playing, aren't gathering around the crank. Like, I mean, that's, it's, it really feels like the, what they're trying to hit, especially by using the name in television, yeah. uh, that they're trying to hit a market of people frankly, our age. Or a little older. Yeah. A little older with families going, oh, the Intellivision. We used to gather around the TV and play those games as a family or I used to play with my siblings or, you know, like maybe with my parents or something. I want that experience with my children. Except that your children have the internet and a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. And, and they're having amazing experiences already. Yeah, it, it's 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 one of those you can't, you can't go home again kind of things. Yeah. Right? You can't recapture that sort of thing. Although I do like that video at the beginning with the positional disc. Yeah. A simple positional simple disc. Simple positional disc. Which was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody's. 
Yeah, I don't think that was anybody's nickname <laughs> in high school. 